Hello everyone! Welcome back to this game! Okay, taking a break from reading the books for a moment. Hi! What was that thing in the reading room? Yeah, a very strange and mysterious creature. What is it? An intelligent greater fire elemental? But if so, why was it blue? And what was it doing here? I don't understand who or what you are talking about. A blue fire around Loof! He was walking around the reading room, and then he suddenly disappeared when, he tri when we tried talking to him. Girls, have you got a sunstroke? There are no blue fire around Loofs in the library, and never have been. Perhaps you should rest. Or, or, perhaps it was in here, and it disappeared before you had a chance to notice that. Have you considered that? But we all saw him. The four of us couldn't have dreamed the same thing. And maybe you took something before you decided to visit the library? Again, that wouldn't explain them all seeing the exact same thing. Uh, let's just change the subject. Really, girls, I don't know what you saw there, but I'm always glad to see familiar faces in the library. Hmm. But you, young lady, I haven't met before. My name is Felicia. I am Natalia, the keeper of the city library. Are you looking for a particular book? Uh, off chance, but do you happen to have a spell book that can turn people into cats? Yes, a book with a wide variety of supreme magic spells written with living ink. The more the better. But I don't think you have one. Knowledge is not limited to magic. Ordinary books are also contain a lot of useful information. Yes, but they can they set enemies on fire? My father and brother often told me that in the city library you can read about the strengths and weaknesses of the monsters that live nearby Swifton. Oh, a bestiary. This is true. Learning only from your own experience is not always useful, much less safe. Before you fight a dangerous creature, it is better to read about it. The exchange of knowledge and experience, if you think about it, is the main purpose of libraries. We are going on a campaign against the goblins. Can you tell us something useful about these monsters? Alas, Miss Anastasia, contrary to popular belief, goblins are not monsters. I understand that such comparisons may surprise someone, but goblins, just like humans or elves, are one of the most intelligent races in our world. Some scientists claim that we even had a common ancestor. Greenskins cannot boast of great culture, but they do not have an innate or artificially engineered behavior. Humans can be mages or warriors, but goblins can become whatever they, whoever they want to. True, most of them prefer to be thieves and bandits, however, there are always exceptions. Many goblins get along well with wild animals, giant spiders, for example, and they know how to tame them. Some of the green skins possess magic. Okay, I am already very interested in what abilities we will acquire when we get to the DLC. And when do they get their magic power? As far as I know, from... Really, game? They're going to... Give me a word that is spelled with GM. Mewmark. Okay, now I need a goblin dictionary. Give me Mark, the mad mushroom god. Goblins build wooden statues in his honor in forests and caves. Dang pagan monsters. I see. Divine magic. Hey, don't mix together the surface of gods with primitive rites, warlock. Stop arguing. Thank you, Natalia. Even this piece of information about goblins can be useful. Knowing the history of the Swift family, I am sure that you, Miss Anastasia, won't stay here for long. If you have a dangerous journey ahead, I'm ready to offer your party a little help. What kind of help? For many years, I have collected useful information about monsters. 
You and your friends are unlikely to have as much time as I had to compare and systematize the knowledge accumulated in the library. Separate the wheat from the chaff, as they say. I am ready to share the results of my work with you. And where did you get the information from? From the diaries and letters of merchants, soldier, soldiers, travelers, mercenaries, and others. The city archives, as well as memoirs of the Swift family, are of considerable value, too. I read all the papers and that find their way to the library. And you have managed to collect a lot of information? Sometimes I think there's too much. For us, Redonians, writing... Uh, for us, Redonians, writing is like breathing. Once our people learn to hold a pen in their hands, they immediately want to write something, and, and to tell you the truth, many authors clearly exaggerate what they had experienced. Oh boy, wait till the internet becomes a thing for you all. I would not hesitate to say that some of them are rare gabbers. And how do you tell the truth from lie without divine guidance? Comparing the sources. If ten people, unfamiliar with each other, living at different times and belonging to different social classes, wrote that Farog Cyclopses are resilient to all types of poisons, this is obviously true. By systemizing the sources, I made my own notes about most of the creatures that live near Swifton. Strength and, strengths and weaknesses of giant scorpions, spiders, bats, and other dangerous creatures. The records where the truth is separated from fiction would really be very useful for it, to us. I am ready to give you copies of my notes for a price. Again, there's a reason why I'm not buying equipment and items. Unless I have to. A price? Do not get me wrong, but even though the post of the city librarian is considered honorable, and this honor isn't accompanied by a satisfactory salary. I have to earn on the side. If you wish, you can read all books in this library yourself. I, on the other hand, will not only save your time, but can also vouch for my information's credibility. I thank you. We'll keep that in mind. I'll ask about the statue as soon as we actually investigate it first. It looks a lot like one of those Japanese umbrella monsters. A yokai. Of some sort. So, first things first, buy lore information. Oh dear me. I was hoping for a pay once for all information sort of thing. I can't afford all this. Uh, I already have a borrow map. Yes. Okay, give me a moment. I want to catch up on chat. More Morrowind talk, I assume. One of which is a sex scene between her and a Khajiit. When these books were included in the team rating of Morrowind, that part was censored to mean the team rating, but it was censored in universe too. Interesting. Okay, since it was brought up, what's the deal with this? It's an unusual statue. Yes, it's beautiful. I didn't mean that. I feel magic emanating from it, and it's very strong. Hmm, true. I haven't noticed this, but after the redhead said that, I also felt it. I am not a redhead, I've got fair hair. Red hair isn't fair? Um, I, I disagree with that. The statue is definitely magical, and it seems to be connected to the airplane. And what does this magic do? I don't know. I can't understand. The statue has been here for as long as I can remember. I think it equals the library in age. Touch the statue? Yes! The spell on the statue does not respond to our presence. The sculpture ignores us. I feel indifference. Spells don't have feelings. 
This one does, and now it doesn't want to talk to us. You are saying nonsense. You just have a narrow mind. You know what? Stop quarreling. And Maddie says, fair in this case doesn't mean pretty. It means like pale or not dark. So technically red hair can be fair, depending on if it's lighter or more auburn red. Oh, okay. If you feel sad for no reason, then come here and read Fedor Soltanovsky's books. There you'll find a reason to feel sad. And more than one. See, sad books are not one of the things I like to read. Alright, now we ask about the statue. Natalia, I've always wanted to ask you, what kind of statue is installed in the center of the reading room? It's beautiful and mysterious. This is Livius, the god of books and the patron of libraries. Really? A god of books? What did this god do before books were invented? He hails from the plane of air. Livius favors curious and educated people. According to the legend, the god of books rewards everyone who is constantly learning and helping to sp spread knowledge around the world. What kind of reward and where can I get it? I don't know, but I believe in this old legend. Do something that pleases Livius and he will reward you. So if I re read all the books on the stream, do I get some special prize? Very specific. Oh wait! There's actually a quest involved! Um, Reading is radical. <laughs> radical? <laughs> really? Do something that pleases the god of libraries. How very non-specific. B4 says, hopefully the reward for reading all the books is something better than a personal pan pizza from Pizza Hut. I mean, I'd accept it. Oh, I already talked to you. Alright, back to more books. Hmm. What is this big book? The most valuable book in the library. A rare edition of the best series of novels by the great Rodonian writer of the Imperial period, Fedor Sotnovsky. Okay, if we're given the opportunity to read an entire novel, that's going to be the rest of the stream. I doubt that's going to be the case, though. Could it be that it's the complete collection of the Trembling Creatures series? Exactly! Even when I was at school, Mistress Claudia often sent me to the library to read this particular book. And how often? Every time I messed up, this was her punishment. You know, it's a funny thing. I like reading now, but I hated reading in school. Literature was one of those classes that I only took because I had to. And in fact, I failed one year and had to take it again. Reading is a lot more fun when it's not part of schoolwork. Indeed, it is a crime not to read Fedor Soltanovsky books. Though it's kind of a punishment to read them. That's why he is the greatest Rodonian writer. The book is brilliant. You just need to feel it. Hmm, I confess I haven't read it. The Rizzo didn't really force me to. You should catch up. But I suggest doing it in one go. The impression is... stronger. Read a collection of novels in one go? No. Oh boy. Here we go. I'm gonna take a drink in preparation for this. Water, in case you're curious. I don't drink alcohol, and while milk would probably be better for streaming, 
Milk's expensive. Okay, uh, let's do this. Oh boy, yeah, um, hmm. H here it goes. Read Suffering and Pain of the Little Man. So? Why? 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 <laughs> okay, never mind. We're not actually getting to read it. Why is everything so bad? There is an explanation further in the book. Very, very detailed. Okay, as much of an endurance run as it would have been to read all four of these books for realsies, I was actually kind of curious. Okay, maybe this will be fulfilling that quest we just got. Read Travails of the Superfluous Man. Ah, my head! I agree. No, now I'm really curious. Read Fatality of the New Man. Let me die. I don't want to live. Everything is in vain. It is hopeless. We are not creatures. They are creatures. Is this story written from the perspective of a goblin? Who? Or maybe you were not actually reading the book and you're trying to sound like you read the book. Honestly, that's what I did. Read Hopelessness, it won't get any better. I'm suddenly getting an idea of what these books are about. This... This... Is brilliant you know it's not so bad bad of course but not so there are decay dirt and hopelessness everywhere but if you think about it then suffering pain and great sadness are good for a man a real man we will overcome everything the whole party gained 20 to max HP and 10 to max MP Yay! This time, though, uh, our health and stats don't go up with it, so, um, reading those books physically hurt. Let's see, Beerfar says, in the seventh grade, my school had a program where you could take quizzes on the books you read and exchange them for prizes later in the year. I was staying with my great-grandmother who thought TV was satanic. So, I read all the Red Wall books and got tons of points, but the week before I would get to spend them, I had to transfer, transfer schools due to family issues, and I'm still salty that I never got to spend my points. Oh wow, that, that sucks. Also, TV was satanic? It's kind of sad that people like that exist. I forget what it was, but there was definitely a school program like that in my school. Where you got points by reading books and got prizes, yeah. I forget what it was. I admittedly faked part of it. I got my mom to just kind of say to read, I s read some books. I mean, I did read some, but um, not all the time. I can't remember what all the prizes I got were. I do know that I wound up with one prize that was misdelivered to me, a book called The Rocketeer. I don't know if the movie was inspired by it or if the book was inspired by the movie. I also wound up with a book based off of a few episodes of Full House, where they wound up taking the plot of a few episodes and combining it into one story. It was like... Oh, combining the episode where Stephanie, I think it was, was trying to 
perform or host a school play with the episode where she got an ear piercing without permission. It was kind of an interesting take on that, on those two episodes. Oh boy, I remember some of the prizes required a lot of points too. Like, there were some good prizes in there. Can't, again, I can't remember what prizes, but... Well, I never got them. Wouldn't surprise me if there was like a game console and among the prizes, like a Game Boy. Anyway, enough reminiscing. What's this book? A Brief History of Swifton. Open the book. Okie doke. A small border in town, a small border town of Swifton hides in the dense and bog forest of ancient Rodonia, 14 days journey northwest of Whitefield. The settlement started from a watchpost palisade established at the intersection of two roads, from Whitefield in the west to the open seas in the east, and from Jolgrad in the south to northern kingdoms of Turia. People have lived in Whitefield since ancient times, and compared to that, Swifton was built quite recently in the later imperial period. However, according to some historians, the ancestors of modern Rodonians laid paths through local forests in times when the hunting tribes of so-called 24 tribes, future Rodonians, decided to leave the Turian Peninsula and look for places rich in furs in the cold south. If we do not take into account uncivilized goblin tribes, the neighboring countries never disputed that the local lands belonged to Rodonia, but because future Swifton was away from large rivers and trade routes, and because of the barren soils that made agriculture difficult, the border territory has the border territory has was not very attractive even to Rodonian settlers. Merchants and farmers preferred to move east in Whitefield. Hunters went to explore the boundless Tiaga, or Tega? That word, spreading far south from Joel River to the icy main. These forests, which along the northern border remained forgotten, the kings of Rodonia took little part in the affairs of small local communities, sometimes even forgetting to send tax collectors. That is a nice thing to forget. Everything has changed since the... <laughs> that word I know is a typo. But, of the Rodonian Empire, when the princes of Rodonia, having become related with the noble families of Cornelia and Gursa, that is a fun name, declared themselves spiritual heirs and successors of the Purple Empire. Then followed the struggle with the kingdoms of Turia for dominance on the eastern continent, which required a road connecting Whitefield with the port of Sotonovsk, the base of the navy of the Ocean Sea. The Empire wished to subjugate Turian rules to its power, and it needed a second land route from Jolgrad to the kingdoms of Turia. To lay roads, as well as to protect travelers and merchants, they sent a detached unit north under the command of Arseny Topolkov, nicknamed Swift by his soldiers. So we're getting some backstory on Anastasia's family. The war chief constructed a wooden palisade at the crossroads. He made his choice based on the presence of an underground river, which made it possible to supply the palisade with drinking water. The descendants of Arsene Swift became a family of renowned warriors whose fame spread throughout Rodonia. During the government of the tyrant Leonidas, the Topolkov Swift's clan, like other noble families, lost all its titles and privileges. But the Swifts overcame those difficult years with dignity and continued to serve the city founded by their ancestor. Under Swift's rule, the palisade warded off all attacks and bandits from Anditurians. I, I think I missed a word there. The city also survived the onslaught of the Black Knights of the West during the Great Wars. However, most cities can boast similar occurrences from their days of yore, and this small border town hardly has any remarkable moments apart from its war history. The border with the kingdoms of Turia was moved north, and now Swifton leads the quiet life of a typical provincial town. 
Apart from the Warriors Guild, which opened an office in the nearby roadside village, there are no representative officers of any guilds or unions in the city, and the Thieves Guild does not exist at all. It, uh, it does now. Residents are engaged in gardening and small crafts. Almost every family owns a plot of land, but without expensive alchemical fertilizers and the help of magic, the yield of crops strongly depends on the season. Usually, locals do not have extra grain to trade with the neighbors. There are no particular places of interest in towns and efficiencies. Verily, there are known to exist historians of some unscrupulous sort daring to claim that the history of Swifton is more ancient than it is believed to be. Needless to say, to be reckoned amongst them, the humble author has no desire. Even at the time of the resettlement of twenty-four clans near the city, a temple was erected to the terrible god of the land, Zuga. And after the formation of the first Roden state, dark cults displaced from Cornelia began to penetrate into the local region. There are unsubstantiated testimonies of sanctuaries and even temples erected in honor of the gods of darkness, the terrible Abaddon, and the greedy demoness Laverna. I wonder if there is a goddess Shern. However, any information about the found ruins did not receive information. Of course, in ancient Redonia, there are enough mysterious places, but in Swifton, there were no documented objects from the distant past. I keep working at it, you'll find it eventually. Okay, out of curiosity, I want to find this out right now. Can we go through here yet? Nope, it's slashed from the inside. I would assume then that somebody's got to be up there to unlatch it, or else how will anybody ever unlatch it? Staff only, no trespassing. No promises. Thank you for playing my game. I hope you're enjoying it. If you want to report bugs, contact me, criticize me, or praise me, find my contacts in the game credits in the main menu. Looking forward to your feedback and support. Strange letters. They seem familiar, but I can't understand a word. Felicia, can you read it? Hmm. I'm afraid not. I don't know this alphabet. The letters are very similar. Didn't we have this conversation? The letters are very similar to Redonian, but this is not the old Redonian. I know, maybe it's one of the ancient Turian dialects. Turians and Redonians are related. Uh, yes, but Turians stopped using the ancient alphabet much earlier. And, ancient, and even when it was still widely spread, Turian scholars and merchants preferred to use the alphabet of the Western continent kingdoms for the important records. That alphabet served as the foundation for the universal language later. Oh, you mean English. It means there isn't anything useful here? Who knows? Uh, still does not respond to us. So I don't know yet to what to do for the God of Libraries. That said, though, looks like we're done here. So that only took me an hour. With a little bit of time for filler. <laughs> 